In this lesson, we're going to discuss network segmentation. Network segmentation is the process of dividing a network into multiple areas to improve performance, increase bandwidth, reduce congestion, and mitigate security risks. Let's first look at a few ways segmentation improves performance and increases bandwidth specifically. On an Ethernet network, performance and bandwidth are greatly reduced when collisions take place. Remember, collisions occur on a network when multiple devices share the same network medium and send packets at the same time. When you segment your devices, you reduce the number of computers that contend for the medium and reduce the number of collisions that can occur, which in turn increases throughput. Another benefit of network segmentation is that it reduces the number of devices that receive broadcast traffic. Limiting the number of broadcast packets a device needs to process means there's more time for it to process the data that was actually intended for it. When you work with Ethernet, the terms collision domain and broadcast domain are used to describe which areas of the network are affected by these collisions and broadcasts. A collision domain identifies the devices that share the same network segment. These devices are the ones that might send data that could collide with another computer sending data at the same time. A broadcast domain identifies the devices that will see a broadcast frame that's sent on the network. Let's look at some examples. In the network shown here, we have a single hub that several computers are attached to. Because a hub uses a logical bus topology, all these devices share the same network segment, and all the devices connected to the hub reside within the same collision domain. This means that a message sent by one device can collide with a message sent by another device on the same collision domain. To help reduce this possibility, hub devices use Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detection, or CSMACD, to deal with collisions as they occur. Because of this, all hosts connected to the hub can only communicate in half duplex mode. This also limits the network bandwidth available to each device because they can only transmit or send data at any given time, they can't do both. In addition, a broadcast frame sent from one device is forwarded to all the other devices on the hub. All the devices in this scenario reside within the same broadcast domain. Now, let's see what happens when we use a switch instead of a hub. How does this affect the collision and broadcast domains? Remember that a switch uses a logical star topology. In this type of network, each device has a dedicated connection between the device and the switch. No other device shares that same connection or cable, so there's no way collisions can happen. In other words, each switch port effectively defines a separate collision domain. In this example, we have three collision domains, one for each device attached to our switch. This means that we don't need to use collision detection mechanisms anymore because we've eliminated the possibility of any collision ever occurring. Instead of being limited to using half duplex, our network can now use full duplex, which allows the devices to send and receive data at the same time. But be aware that using a switch doesn't affect the broadcast domain because its broadcast domain still consists of all the devices connected to it. The switch will still forward broadcast traffic from one device to all those other devices, just like a hub does. Now, just for fun, let's introduce a little more complexity. Let's say we have a hub connected to a switch port instead of a computer. And this hub has multiple workstations connected to it. Remember that the collision domain is created by the switch port, so all devices connected to a given switch port are part of the same collision domain. In this case, these devices are in the same collision domain because they all share media with the other devices connected to the hub. Because these devices are on a shared medium, we need to enable collision detection and only half duplex communication is possible, not an optimal situation. But these devices over here still have their own collision domain because there's a single device connected to a single switch port. These other devices share a collision domain, and these devices are part of the same broadcast domain. Remember that the broadcast domain includes all the devices that are connected to the same switch. Now let's look at another example. Suppose we have a switch that's connected to a router and the router is connected to a hub on the other side. Where are the collision and broadcast domains in this example? Remember that collision domains on a switch are created by each switch port, so we simply look at each switch port to identify the collision domains, here, here, and here. On the hub, the collision domain includes all the devices connected to the hub. In this example, the collision domain would include this interface over here on the router. So in this network, we have four collision domains. 
Collisions are still possible between all the devices on the hub, but collisions on this side are eliminated because we're using a switch instead. But what about the broadcast domain? The key thing to remember is that routers don't forward broadcast traffic by default. A broadcast frame sent from the switch is forwarded to all the other devices that are connected to the switch, including this interface here on the router. But the router won't forward the broadcast traffic. So in this example, we have two broadcast domains. The first broadcast domain encompasses all the devices that are connected to the switch, including this router interface. And the second broadcast domain includes this other router interface and all the other devices connected to the hub. Why is it important to understand broadcast and collision domains? Well, here's the deal. Using an optimal network configuration reduces the negative effects of collision and broadcast traffic on your network. For example, let's suppose we have an old network that uses ancient hubs that are all interconnected. You'd experience a large number of collisions, which would increase as new computers were added to the network. The easiest and most obvious option to reduce these collisions is to replace any out-of-date hubs with switches. You could also segment the network to reduce excessive broadcast traffic. Remember that the switch will forward all broadcast traffic it receives just like a hub does. And left unchecked, the amount of broadcast traffic on a network can become so large that it starts to displace regular network communication. You can resolve this by implementing routers to break up the network into multiple broadcast domains. In this example, we could install a single router connected to switches on either side to create two separate broadcast domains. By doing this, we've cut the number of devices within the same broadcast domain in half. You can also use segmentation to optimize network communications in several other scenarios. Essentially, segmentation creates islands within your network. Sometimes you might need to isolate low security areas of your network from the internet. For example, let's suppose you work in an industry that uses an ICS system to control industrial equipment. These systems tend to implement little security, or none at all, and as an administrator, there isn't a whole lot you can do to fix this. Your organization might also use applications that only run on legacy operating systems. These systems are targets for attackers who like to use them for criminal purposes, maybe as a launching pad for infiltration or to conduct distributed denial of service attacks. To keep this from happening, you can segment these systems from your regular production network as well as from the internet. You can also use network segmentation to isolate high security areas of your network. Suppose your organization wants to isolate some of the more sensitive computers from some older legacy systems or lower level security systems. For example, you could place the more secure types of computers, such as the human resource computers and the engineering computers, on their own segment. And then you could place the legacy and lower security devices on their own segments as well and configure each department on their own subnet. Firewalls with their access control lists can then be used to restrict traffic between them. For example, you could block the sales, marketing, and HR departments from accessing engineering data. Likewise, you could block sales, marketing, and engineering from accessing sensitive HR data. You'll frequently see this done to reconfigure a network so that it complies with governmental security mandates. You can also use network segmentation to protect your local area network, or LAN, from external threats. Because your LAN connects all the computers at your organization's site, it's worth going through the trouble to keep external threats at bay. And if you use virtual LANs or VLANs, it's especially worth the trouble since you have so many devices logically connected. If something affects one, it'll affect all of them. Let's go into some of the best practices for security. Protect your LAN by doing things like encrypting information, requiring authentication, auditing regularly, physically securing your network, and keeping hardware and software up to date. You can provide a further layer of protection by creating screened subnets. A screen subnet is a subnetwork that you place between your LAN and the wild, wild west of the internet or other unsecure networks. External network nodes can only access what you choose to expose on the screened subnet, and the rest of your network is protected by firewalls. Your most vulnerable services are ones that also serve users outside of your LAN, like email, web, and DNS servers. These are often placed in the screened subnet. Communication between hosts inside and outside of the screen subnet is restricted to help maintain security. These barriers make external attacks much more difficult to execute. Another benefit of using network segmentation is the ability to create a sandbox network. A sandbox network is one that's isolated from the normal production network. This is where you can test products without impacting your day-to-day -day network communications. 
For example, you might want to create a sandbox network where you can install and test operating system updates before you roll them out to the main system. You can also use network segmentation to create separate private and public networks. You could use the strategy in conjunction with a network access control system to place employees' personal wireless devices on a guest wireless network that's isolated from your production network. This allows them to use the company's wireless network to access the internet, but it prevents them from downloading sensitive company data to their personal devices. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we discuss network segmentation. The goal of network segmentation is to reduce collisions, reduce broadcast traffic, and increase network bandwidth. It can also be used to create specialized networks that are separated from your production network. Network segmentation can increase your network security by creating secure areas that are isolated from the rest of the network. And it can also help you stay in compliance with governmental security mandates.